Kitty. Hmm? There's something most important I feel I must tell you. Right now? Mm-hmm. Right now. I just may have something most important to tell you. Kitty. Tomorrow morning, I'll, uh, I'll be heading west on the Chris Hale wagon train. West on a wagon train? Victor, that's exciting. What a lovely surprise. No, no, no. I didn't say we, darling. I only wish we could go along. You wish it? I only wish you could go along. I don't understand. Victor, what's the matter? Kitty, will you try to understand? If I didn't love you more than any other woman I've ever known in my whole life, I wouldn't have done what I've done. Victor, what did you do? No, no, no. I, I should never have married you. I, I don't deserve the happiness you've given me. I don't know why you're, what you're talking about. Why not? Kitty, it has nothing to do with what we mean to each other. Just give me a minute to explain. Just listen to me for one minute. Kitty, I married you out of a mad, crazy love I knew I had no right to. I don't know what came over me, but nothing else mattered. I had to have you as my wife, even if it was only for a, a few days, a few precious hours. Victor, what have you done? I've broken a law. I've made myself a bigamist for you. You're married? Well, what are we going to do? It's not fair to ask you to wait until I'm free from Martha. She'll let you go? Oh, yes. Yes, for years now, she's wanted to set me free. She knows there can never be anything between us. There never has been. I finally agreed to give her what she wanted. That's why I'm taking her to San Francisco on the wagon train. She has family there. Well, I just couldn't leave her alone. I have to live with myself, too. And you owe it to her. I'll wait. I'll wait right here. Well, how can I ask you to do that? Because I love you. But I live without you for a year. Oh, Victor, what else can we do? I can't go to San Francisco. Why not? Why can't you go to San Francisco? There's an old friend of mine from college here in town, and I'm sure he'll help us. What was that you were going to tell me that was so important? It's really not that important now. Miles Brisbane. Your humble servant, sir. Watch the way you talk to me, mister. Oh, I was only trying to show my profound respect for any minion of the law. Pretty rotten obvious what you think of the law. Oh, some stupid fool out there says he's your friend. Hmm? I've got a friend? Sure glad to see you get bailed out. Someone who wants to save my soul? You just let your big feet take your rotten soul right out of this town. Well, you look no different, Miles. If you're who I think you are, the years have been unkind to you, too. <laughs> Victor Hart. Harvard, class of 59. You've got no class. My, uh, my lovely wife, Martha, told me you were living here and of your circumstances. Martha? That's a woman's name that doesn't ring an ugly bell. Well, Martha's the woman I traded to Harvard 59 for. Martha de Brown? I believe she's from the same snob hill your family dropped you off of. Oh, my disintegration is still social news. I'm unpleasantly surprised. Let's go somewhere and talk. This isn't my favorite club. What evil reason did you have for paying my dues? You let me buy you a drink, and I'll explain. If you'll go along with the deal, 
I'll pay all expenses to get you to San Francisco. Then you can take a boat headed in the direction of whatever island you want to squat on. Look, why don't you uh, keep an eye on the free lunch counter and leave the bottle? My classmate has unlimited funds. He's married wisely. Oh, and waiter, uh, would you bring me a, a banana, a papaya, and uh, some green coconut milk? And tell the wahinis to go down to the beach. I'll be along when the sun isn't so hot. Miles, he doesn't know what you're talking about. What hope is there for a society that does not appreciate the art of the hula? The freedom of space on an outrigger, the beauty of uninhibited wahinis. Are you sure my wife has never met your ex-wife? I can guarantee <clears throat> that unless your wife wore pants, my ex-wife had nothing whatever to do with her. Now, this is your chance to get to Hawaii. Tahiti. I never heard of it, but if that's what you want, go. If you'll shake hands and give me your word as a gentleman, I'll tell you what you have to do. <laughs> that's funny. Funny? What's funny? What uh, will you give me your word as? You're smart, Miles. You're real smart. You still think like a lawyer. No, no, I was disbarred. It's part of my disgrace to the human race, so I'm leaving it. Shake, and you've got your ticket. <laughs> Why not? I'd probably do anything but kill. Oh, I'd do that, too, if I weren't a confirmed coward. <laughs> yes, I know your breed. How could you? I wouldn't trust most men with what I'm asking you to do. They don't have your brand of honor. Thanks. You just keep your eye on that and your mind on Tahiti. What I want you to do will be no trouble for you. Uh, just maybe you've got me figured wrong. I don't think so. But if I do, you better figure I'm not a coward. I'll kill for what I want. Sweetheart, this is Miles Brisbane, the friend I told you about. Sweetheart? You've uh, grown older, old pal, but no wiser. Now, wouldn't it uh, be a coincidence if your name were Martha? <laughs> well, I think it's funnier that her last name is the same as yours. My unhealthy instincts tell me that uh, this is part of the contract I made with your friend here. I am not a this. I'm so sorry, miss. Would you please tell this friend of yours what you want from him? You will take her on the wagon train as your wife. All right, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Miles Brisbane? Well, welcome aboard. I'm Chris Hale, your wagon master. You uh, read that little booklet I gave you, you will discover, among other things, you can hold me responsible for running this little city on wheels. I'm sort of the mayor, judge, justice, the peace, sheriff, pastor, and horse doctor. <laughs> You'll see in that uh, wagon train Bible that we hold strictly to the law. For those who cheat at cards or beat their wives, they best not go along because we'll throw the book at them. But rich or poor, any variety of color or religion, Republican or Democrat, we'll hold you to the law. What's the uh, penalty for being an agnostic? Well, like I said, Mr. Brisbane, we hold to the law. That's what I get paid to do. Among uh, other things. That's right, among other things. You'd better read that booklet carefully. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Miles, we've got things to do. No, wait. Uh, you heard the master. I'd better Miles, read this please. carefully. No, I may not be able to perform according to the letter of the wagon train law, so it's best that we don't go, as suggested. Mm -hmm. Well, if you feel that way about it, maybe it is. Miles! Miles Brisbane! Well, I'll be as I live and breathe. <laughs> Say, I haven't seen you since Harvard. You haven't changed a bit. Oh, a little maturity showing here and there, but uh, doesn't look like you're worrying too much. <laughs> Say, it sure is good to see you after all these years. Why, well, you remember me, don't you? Victor Harp. 
Oh, I beg your pardon, ma'am. I'm so surprised to see your husband here after all these years. I plumb forgot my manners, Victor Harp, your humble servant. How's your wife, Harp? If I remember correctly, you uh, married one of the older ones off Beacon Hill. Uh, yeah. Martha's just fine, just fine. She's going to be pleased as punch to know you're traveling on the same wagon train. Well, we're not sure yet. Oh? Uh, what's the matter? Anything I can do? Oh, my husband is concerned about the fine print in the law. Oh, <laughs> that's right, Miles. <laughs> you studied the law, didn't you? You know, when you get onto my friend's sense of humor, you're gonna get a big bang out of him. Oh, he's a great one for pulling legs. Well, I imagine. I just can't wait to, to tell Martha there's a Brisbane from Boston on the same train. Uh, Mrs. Brisbane, may I call you by your first name? Please do. My friends call me Kitty. Any friend of mine is a friend of Kitty's, so or vice versa. What's eating him? No, he said it. He did? He's an agnostic. What's that? Sounds like a rotten egg or something. <laughs> Agnostics believe in nothing. You must believe in something with a wife like that. Well, that agnostic better watch out for his new best friend. Did you see the way he looked at her? Afraid so. He believes in something. What? His self. Did you ever feel just as sure as there's a tomorrow you can smell trouble brewing? Now, wait a minute. I've been cooking the same recipe since I joined this outfit. You don't like it, you don't have to eat. sweetheart oh why I ever let you talk me into taking a wagon train to San Francisco I will never know I can't stand boats you know that mm. well all this bouncing around is not going to be too good for my weak heart there's nothing wrong with your heart uh -oh. I only wish mine was as strong oh so now you know more than the doctors huh? I know gin no matter how much it's discolored with peppermint hmm I'll be lucky if I live to see San Francisco. Oh. You know, we're going to be together a long time. And you'd like me to at least be civil, huh? Might make it easier. Would it? Besides, you have no idea what I am to Victor. For all you know, I could be his wife. What kind of a man are you? Oh, I'm just a hired hand. Like you. I'd sure hate to put a gun in your hands. Me to invite Miles Brisbane and his wife to come over and visit us after dinner, dear? Mm. I don't think I've seen that conceited Brisbane brat in, oh, at least 10 years. You know, even his own sisters disliked him. Miles is a strange duck. Mm -hmm. You can't call him a brat, though. He's my age. Mm. I can just imagine the kind of girl he married. Well, I only met her for a minute today. She's, uh, very attractive. <laughs> I'm sure she is.
spring, that'd be all right. This time of year, this is the route I'm going to take. And what about the Calahousie Indians? Well, they're not an organized tribe. Yeah, but they drift around a lot, Chris. They don't steal anything that ain't tied down. I'd trust any other Indian before I'd trust one of them. If you're going to take this trail, you think we'd better tell the folks about it? You heard what happened that last train that went through. You don't say. You don't say what? I don't know. What he heard. They kidnapped two women off that train. They only got one back. And she died. And at that, she may have been luckier than the one they couldn't find. Is that all they steal is women? No, they'd go for you. Why? Well, you'd be a double prize. Double? Well, two scalps on one head. There, Charlie. Fill that up while you still have the chance. Yes, sir. Scalps. Now we get a little closer, Coop. We'll warn the people about the Calahousie. I do think you could scout this area right in here for game. A little extra meat, we can salt it down. All right. You were just jicing about them Calahousies, weren't you, Coop? No more than you calling this harness beef stew. <laughs> I'm sure you must be good at something. Yeah, you know, I ought to give you a bath in this. No, oh, man can't legally beat his wife. I wonder what uh, Mr. Hale's good book would say about a woman who would scald a husband who isn't legally hers. You stooped to blackmail? They can only hang you once. No. Horse stealing is a worse offense than wife beating. How do you like that for justice? You know, there are laws against it. Oh, there are laws against everything a man does. Even love. Don't you touch me. Kitty, I'm only... All right. It's all right. You're all right, Kitty. Kitty, Kitty, don't be a fool. What do they think if they see you throwing your arms around me like that? Well, it's just a... No, if I had a gun, I could play the jealous husband. But I'd only shoot you around the edges for effect. Now, you mind your own business. What's this all about, Kitty? He's treating me like I'm a... Like you said, I'm minding my business. I'm living up to the spirit of my contract. I'm only treating her like my wife. I don't like your sense of humor, Miles. Oh. Well, there's uh, nothing much that any of us can do about it under the circumstances, is there? If he gets to acting too much like you're his wife, use this. Why not, Kitty? They'd never hang a woman for defending herself from a beast, husband or not. Darling, be a lamb and get my medicine, would you? Uh, there should be an open bottle in the trunk beside our bed. <sighs> would you ever, in your wildest imagination, dream your boudoir would be a covered wagon? <laughs> I've slept in lots worse. I'm sure you have, Miles. <laughs> What's your first name? Victor's always so formal when he has to introduce me to an attractive woman. He has a guilty conscience about women. Even if he isn't involved with them, he always acts as if he is. And my Christian name is Katina. Katina. Now, uh, what would that be? Cat, for short. But uh, she prefers Kitty. Oh, Miles Brisbane, if I didn't know your family, I'd think you were reared in the gutters of Boston. When we get to know each other better, you must uh, tell me why you bothered to marry him. You know, most men uh, think nothing of misleading any pretty thing to get what they want. But uh, they marry you for a reason. <clears throat> well, Kitty and I have a uh, common interest that you might say brought us together. <clears throat> Martha, there was no open oh, bottle anywhere. Oh, darling, in the I'm sorry. I just remembered when you left. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 
You'd never know that Victor and I have been married eight years, would you? The way he hovers over me and worries himself sick about that silly little heart flutter of mine, like it might take me before my time. Well, you must come and visit us again before too long. Oh, uh, well, let's go, Pity. Victor's wife has a weak heart, and we don't want to put any strain on it, do we? Oh, I'm, uh, I'm glad I met you, Katina. Victor, she's so very pretty. How could you, uh, tell me you didn't notice? My husband rarely misses an opportunity to get acquainted with an attractive woman. Why do you suppose he didn't see you? Victor, you wouldn't take a second look at an old college friend's wife. One man's food is another man's poison. Have you any idea what this beautiful lady means to me? No. And I'm not dying to find out. <laughs> You have the whole picture of Martha's society. You can say anything as long as uh, you don't quite tell the truth and wear a smile. Oh, Victor, how I must suffer. Now, oh, wait. That Salem witch rides a gold broom. That shiny dust that she sprinkles on him kills a lot of the pain. Why don't you leave me alone? Uh, now, this is our first night on the wagon train as make-believe man and wife. When I don't have Victor, I have this. Ah, yes. <clears throat> of course. Now, tell me, uh, when you were a little girl, didn't your mummy and daddy ever tell you what happens to little girls that play with fire? And don't go stumbling over things and wake me up when you come in. The poker game probably be over early, dear. If it's late, I'll make a bedroll under the wagon. Yes, well, that's a good idea, sweetheart. I know you're just thinking of me, and you, you don't want anything to happen to mommy, do you? That's right, Martha. Take your medicine and sleep tight. Two aces showing. How do you get so lucky? There's an old proverb. Lucky in cards, unlucky in love. Yes, and they say, nothing ventured, nothing gained. Bill, how about it? Nope. I'll give you half my winnings. Charles, if it's true, unlucky in cards, lucky in love, you'd make Casanova look like an amateur. All right, then. I'll give you half my women. You leaving already? It's early. The moon isn't even up. Well, you know me. Early bird. Charlie, I'll take you up on your proposition. Oh, I was just joicing. I ain't got no women either. <laughs> That's all right. You take my seat. It's lucky. We'll split half your winnings. Good night, gentlemen. Shall we amuse ourselves with Lady Luck tomorrow evening? Your wish is my command, sir. Now, there goes what I call a gentleman. Kitty. How much do you love me? What's the matter? Do you love me? Well, of course I love you. What's, what's bothering you, Kitty? You have no idea what's bothering me? Now, Kitty, let's not go through that again. How many times do I have to promise you that when, well, when the time is right, I'll, I'll get rid of her? Get rid of her? <laughs> or you seem to forget. Or you said that as soon as you got to San Francisco, she was going to set you free. And now let's get rid of her. What do you plan to do? Kitty, we might as well face it. I can never leave Martha. Well, how would we live? Without Martha's money, there is no you and there's no me now. I've come to realize that. Why'd you marry me? Really now, Kitty, I wish you would keep your voice down. Why don't you want everyone to know that you have two wives, that you're a bigamist? 
by law, Kitty. By using his last name, you're Miles' common law wife. Well, you think that's going to stop me from telling the truth? Well, you never intended to leave Martha once you married me. Well, I'll see you behind bars for bigamy, and I don't give a hoop what they do to me. Now, Kitty. Now, if you're going to try to get even with me, it won't work. I swear I don't know what you're talking about. You wanted to get married? And I honestly did love you. Now, why don't you just relax? Things could be a lot worse. No, they couldn't. It's either Martha or me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to gloat, gentlemen, but this is my third straight pot. <laughs> well, I'd rather lose my money to the pretty gentleman. Sorry, Miles. I forgot he was your friend. Not exactly. We've uh, just known each other for too long. I've got Victor Harp's hot seat, and we're partnering. So don't make any remarks about my... Maybe somebody caught one of those thieving Indians nosing around. Only one shot. Deal. He's either dead or scared off by now. Ah, uh, Indian's too smart. Probably somebody cleaning his gun. Will you deal before I cool off? One gunshot don't mean nothing. One at Concord was heard around the world. Must have been an awful big gun. No awful big issue. Hey, where's Chris Hill? Did you hear that shot? You know what happened? Oh, I'm sure sorry for you, Mr. Brisbane. What a thing to happen. Where's Hill? You're sorry for me? What happened? Look, I gotta get Chris Hale. Don't make me be the one to tell you. Tell me what? Your wife shot a hole as big as your fist at Mr. Harp. He's dead? Real dead. She murdered him and run out. Hale! Hey, Mr. Hale! I don't think he ever knew what hit him. He was facing whoever pulled the trigger. You don't believe Sanders? Well, so he heard a shot and saw her run out. Does that prove she murdered him? There's no one else in the wagon. No one else came out. Sanders says he'll swear to that. That gun belongs to Victor Harp. Can Sanders swear that he didn't shoot himself? She came out of that wagon with a gun still smoking in her hand. She had a killer look in her eyes. Well, no man in his right mind would have tried to take her. Not the way she held that there gun before she threw it back in the wagon and ran. How do you know that killer look? Your wife look at you that way? You leave my wife out of this. Just because your wife... Well, she was trying to protect her honor. Maybe uh, she had to kill him. What was he doing in your wagon anyway, with you off playing poker? That's enough, Sanders. You'll have a chance to speak your piece later. This is what you disturb me for, a public meeting? Well, it, it seems to me you could make up your silly rules or whatever it is you do in crowds without me, but you had to bring me. Yes, ma'am. Where's my husband? Mrs. Harp. Well, Miss Dale? Mrs. Harp, there's been a, an unfortunate accident. My husband? Well, where is he? What's happened to him? There's, uh, there's nothing any of us can do. He's in that wagon? Who shot him? Well, this is Miles Brisbane's wagon. He cut my husband with his wife? No, Miles was in a poker game when it happened. Who then? She did? She murdered him, didn't she? Kitty was seen leaving the wagon right after the shot was heard. Where is she? Nobody knows. She ran off, probably hiding. Scared from this experience, whatever it was. A woman's gonna get what she deserves. Oh, no, let's not jump to conclusions, Mrs. Harp. That won't do your husband any good now. Let's wait until we hear Kitty's side of the story. I don't want to hear her side of the story. She murdered him. There's no excuse, no reason. She enticed him in here and she shot him in cold blood. Hanging's gonna be too good for her. <clears throat> now, I know how you must feel, Miss Harp. Oh, oh, my, 
Now look at the poor, bereaved wife. Her life ruined by a wanton woman who tempted her husband and then killed him because he would not yield to her wiles. Why don't you shut up? Your wife has enough trouble without you throwing my... salt in the wound. Mr. Hill, my heart. Put my medicine. My heart. <laughs> Perfume gin, society's medicine. You open your mouth once more, Miles, and I'm not going to be responsible for what that crowd does. What are you trying to do, get them to lynch you and forget about her? Well, what are you all standing around for? What are you all standing around for? A human being's been killed, murdered. Now, if a man did it, you'd go after him. You wouldn't let a mad dog just run around free. You'd, you'd, you'd hunt him down and you'd, you'd shoot him on sight. Well, just because she's a woman is no reason for you to just... Mrs. Harp. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but my husband who loved me just as much as I loved him lies, lies dead in there. Well, you, you just gonna let this murder get away? There's nothing we can do tonight. Kitty Brisbane will answer to the law. If she doesn't come back on her own, we'll go out tomorrow at daylight and bring her in. She can't go far. So get back to your wagons and try to get a little sleep. This wagon train's rolling out tomorrow as usual. I promise you law and order. Don't make this crime worse than it is. Worse than it is? What's worse than killing or murdering? Nothing except murdering in the name of justice. Well, that woman's not going to get away. I offer... I offer $5,000 to anyone who will bring that woman in. Alive. But I want her alive. <laughs> up a track. She must have been running like a scared rabbit. Left this and tracks. Nobody could miss. You were right, Chris. Miles went after her, circled the train till he found her route. Well, he said that 5,000 reward was his. Claimed the murdered man owed it to him. And he wasn't sharing it. Say he'd bring her in alive alone. It was to go out and bring them both in? Waste time talking about it. It's gonna be hard to find. A lot of wide open space out there. I'll let him bring her in. You don't believe him, do you? He was pulling your leg. He's got some sort of sick humor. Yeah, we play poker with him most every night. He says one thing and means another. He's a character is what he is. Well, he meant it when he said that bounty was his. He'll bring her in. Bounty hunt his own wife? He wouldn't do that. Well, I say he will. So let's get this wagon train rolling. We're running late.
Kill one man, you get hung. Another, you get a medal. Train by now. Yeah, well, if you're aiming to find them and collect that bounty, you can forget it. Oh, no, sir, not me. If I were him, I wouldn't bring her in for any amount of money. Would you? Well, you're not him, and I don't know what I'd do. All right, let's go. Fuzzy don't show we're here. Miles. I'm sorry I treated you the way I did. I was so sure you despised me. Well, Kitty, no, I... Let me uh... finish. You see, no matter what you are or, or what you've done with your life, coming after me to help me... I wanted to die. I deliberately killed a man. Why? Love turns to hate, after what he did to me. Somebody would have come out here to find you and bring you back. Uh, his wife offered $5,000 to have you brought in alive. You. Well, where did you think you could run to? They'd find you. You've got a chance with the wagon train, at least as much chance as you do in this... in this country or with some dirty, uncivilized Indian. That uncivilized Indian only tried to help me. Sure, sure, just like the civilized law and justice you'll get back there. A bounty hunter? Mm-hmm. For money? Mm-hmm. You sell me, you know what you are. Yes, but you murdered him, honey, not me, you. Now, he owes me something. Do you think I was letting him use me out of friendship? Do you think I was pretending to be your husband out of love? Money, honey, money. And you murdered my chance. Now, what I get for taking you in, I'll have earned. Oh, boy, how well I've earned it the hard way. You're my last ticket left. I'm taking you in alive. Try. What did you say? I said try. Let's go. No. Oh, no. Not yet. We'll wait till the sun gets low. Out there with no water. Oh, no. We're not taking any chances. We're not? I'm... I'm sorry. Be sorry for yourself. All right, let's go. Do 
you want me to make you move? You touch me. And you'll get me with a rock from behind, huh? Just like that Indian who was only trying to help you? That Indian would have killed you. Too bad. If you knew then that I'd come to take you back, you could have my blood on your conscience with victors. But what's the difference? After you kill one man, you can kill them all. The price is the same. I can see you agree. Um, I'll try not to turn my back on you, sweetheart. Antoinette, the uh, civilized horse is yours. I'll tie you if I have to. You're not getting another chance to try anything like this. I'm no good to you, Dad. No. Now get up. There's no other way, Kitty. I'm taking you back. Don't you understand? You have no right to destroy yourself. There's nowhere to run to. That's the way things are now. Your only chance is in their hands back there. And you're not going to give up the bounty money for anything. to everyone on this wagon train that you intended to let that murderess and her husband get away. It is? Why, you didn't send men out after them immediately and bring them back. I will never know. Now, Miles Brisbane is irresponsible, uh, immoral, and uh, a thoroughly disgusting man. Why, even his own father disowned him. Well, he did go out to get her and bring her in. Well, either you want to see that girl go free or you are a fool. Miles Brisbane went out without a gun, without water, without even a hat. Does that sound like a man who's trying to run? Miles Brisbane is a fool, too. Mrs. Harp, you have my sympathy over the loss of your husband. But even if I did make a mistake in judgment, there's nothing you can do about it. Isn't there? Well, now, Mr. Hale, I'm sure there are any number of men on this wagon train who will do anything for money. Now, I intend to see that that woman gets exactly what she deserves. 
if it costs me every dollar I have. And you've decided what she deserves? Oh, no, Mr. Hill. The law is very specific. You murder and you hang. And that's too good for her. <laughs> soon get it over with. You don't expect any consideration, do you? Of course. I'll tell them how much Victor and I loved each other, how we, we planned to see each other even though I knew he had a wife, how he bought you, bought me, a poor, naive little... Kitty, you tell them the truth and there isn't anything that anyone can do for you. If I don't, you will. I'm just going to collect the money due me and go on my way. I know better than to get involved with their law. It's very manly of you. Well, what do you want me to do? You want me to tell them that uh, you're not my wife? That I was doing a friend a favor? Might as well be putting the rope around your neck with my own hands. Is that what you want me to do? Well, I'm not going to. Okay, I got it. Miles, you are a human being. Do you think so? Yes. You love someone very much and they hurt you? Pay for everything you get or do in this life. And mistakes? Ten times over for mistakes. Nothing off for admitting that you're wrong? Nothing. For being sorry? Nothing. Nothing. Something's happened to you and you're not the same person? Not even if someone cares. No way to start over? There are some mistakes that kick you out of the human race. Miles. Kitty, two people alone on a prairie don't count. You dream and wake up. Nothing. I hope you find your island. Kitty, I hope you find... whatever it is you wanted. it up. I'm not going to hand it to you. I don't know why you don't approve of me, Mr. Hale. Can't hate a man for wanting to see justice triumph. You uh, despise this blue-blooded woman who only offered the reward out of the milk of human kindness? Despise me? Why, well, you've got your nerve. Now, now, Martha, remember, the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. And that's exactly where you can go. And I'll never forget, you, Martha, gave me my ticket. Why don't you take your blood money and get out of here? There's a Chinese proverb. Going to law is losing a cow for the sake of a cat. I know how he feels. Giving up a cow for a cat ain't easy, you know. Must you waste time on a trial? Well, I think it'd be kind of nice, out of courtesy, don't you? Courtesy? 
to that kind of woman, just like it was nothing. You heard her say to everybody, yes, I shot him. He promised me things, and he refused to keep his word, so I killed him. Well, Mr. Hale, you have her signed confession with her real name, Kitty Pryor. She's not even legally married to Miles. Oh, she does not deserve courtesy, a woman like that, no. Maybe not, but she deserves a trial for her life, if you don't mind. Like you say, the law is very specific. Can't hang a murderer without one. I think it's a ridiculous waste of time. And she will only suffer every minute through it. Probably won't take long. Well, on second thought, maybe it'll do my heart good to see her suffer. Worse than Madame Lafarge. I don't recall her. She knitted while she watched the guillotine slice off the heads of royalty. Where was it? Paris, France. A couple of years back. You never told me you bossed a wagon train in Paris, France. <laughs> <clears throat> Bill, you and Duke round up everybody over 21. We'll have to choose a jury for a trial. All right. <laughs> Bartender. It's gonna be, Sheriff. It's on Chris Hale. And if you're age whiskey, Mike, you uh, can't sell Chris Hale, huh? <laughs> no, we can't. Say, uh, when's you bringing this here killer into town to be hanged? Uh, tonight. Uh, wagon train will be a few miles east of town. He wants to get in and out without losing any traveling time. Uh, guess I better send a couple of my deputies out to help bring this killer in, don't you think? Well, that won't be necessary, Sheriff. Uh, this one won't throw any last ditch ruckus. Oh, yeah? You know, a man facing the gallows can't be figured. He's liable to do anything. Well, uh, this isn't a he, it's a she. You're hanging a woman? Mike, fill her up. Uh, not exactly, Sheriff. Uh, we're turning her over to you with an official court order to carry out the law. You gotta hang her. Uh, no. You didn't. Mike. You didn't. What did you do that for? Let her go, Sheriff. Guess we'll have to try it again, Alex. We'll dump about 20 pounds of sand. Yeah. We've got to find out how much he weighs. Well, I buried a lot of women in my day. I'd say they average about 5'5", 130. This one ain't average. It's yeah. a man killer. Hang her? Is that what he said? Hang her. Duke! Oh. Duke! Run back to the wagon train. What do you want? You, you can't hang Kitty Pryor. Something... Something went wrong. No... No jury would... Would take a woman's life? Mixed up in this killing. Fell off or turned her in the way I heard it. Open up this cage. You have no right to keep me in here. He and his woman was thick as mud till he swapped her in for cold cash. Yeah. About right? Yeah, I think that'll do it, Sheriff. You can't keep me here without charges. I'm a lawyer. I know my rights. Lawyer? <laughs> he knows his rights like a doctor buries his mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You're not going to hang her, you hear me? We're not? But tomorrow morning, you get up at the crack of dawn and look out that window. You got yourself a reserved seat. Kitty? So this is your island? 
safety. I, I didn't figure it this way for you. You know I didn't. Well, Mr. Hale, how about this? <clears throat> you and your law. This is their God-given right, huh? You're a fine one to talk. You certainly helped her. Her law is for what you did, too. Oh, you and nobody else have the right to judge Kitty and me. Uh, if you think that I had left her for my own sake, that's all right. It doesn't matter. But you. You let him put a rope around her neck. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you couldn't make him understand, could you? Well, well tell me, how did they explain that it was his gun? Or what was he doing in my wagon anyway? Didn't they listen to her at all? Kitty wouldn't say one word in her own defense. Oh, no. What's wrong with people? Just because she did something in a moment of terror, they don't have the right to take her life. How can they take what isn't theirs? I mean, who do they think they are? They're just people. They're no better or cleaner than Kitty or me or even you. Do they become gods because you put 12 minds together? I did whatever I could legally, Miles. I pled with my own heart, too. They think she's dirt to be swept away just because she had the God-given capacity to love a man too deeply. Well, she's nothing that you stomp on and forget. Kitty? I'm sorry. If I thought there was any chance they'd do this to you, I'd never let them take you back. You know that. I'm sorry, Kitty. There's nothing any of us could have done. It was their own wish, the people. That was their verdict. My hands are tied. Well, they haven't tied mine. So you go back and tell them that. Because I swear, if there's a God in heaven, they haven't tied mine! Look, Mr. Ain't you got no respect? Now you shut that big mouth of yours or I'll shut it for you. She ain't got much time. But you ain't gonna ruin what's left. What's between these two, anyway? The story the way I heard it was, he turned her in for the reward. The way he's carrying on, you'd swear he was in love with her or something. What's he in here for? Well, I wasn't taking any chances. If I heard about these two being mixed up with each other, well, you know what I mean. Kitty, would you like to be alone? No. They'll grant any reasonable last request. Would they let Miles in here with me? Is that what you'd like? Will it help? I don't want to be alone. Would you rather have... No. You know, it's... it's... funny. I thought I... loved a man, and I thought I hated Miles. Put him in with her. Well, are you sure? Is it legal? It don't seem right somehow. Well, hanging a woman doesn't seem right to me somehow. Let him be alone. I'll be responsible. You're a prisoner. most of the night, Kitty. If I can be of any comfort to you, the sheriff will know where I am. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Bye, Kitty. Goodbye. Talk to me, Miles. Talk to me the way you did out there in the desert. You tell me the things you told me then about time and space, about the miracle of life being what one person can feel for another, and about the blessing of death, so that we can all become one together forever.
If you can't do something legal, maybe we ought to do something illegal, huh? Well, if it hadn't been for Martha Harp, the jury would have recommended mercy. Every murder has its Martha Harp. That jury was all family people. They don't understand a woman like Kitty Pryor. <laughs> so the men think they do. Well, if she'd spoken up, she would have stood a chance. What could she say? The minute she signed that confession with her right name, character damage was done. Why did she have to get so holy all of a sudden? It's Miles Brisbane's wife, she could have gone scot-free. Clear as day, she was defending her honor. Well, that was the trouble. She couldn't defend something that they were sure she didn't have. A couple of more drinks, and I'm going to go get her out of that jail by myself. I wish it was that simple. You don't know any more about the law than you do about cooking, do you, Charlie? No, I don't, and I'm proud of it. Hand me that bottle. But I don't know what I smell, taste, and feel. And my senses are good, too. So is my stew, and that's more than I can say about your law. <laughs> I loved him too much. He was all that mattered. I would have done anything for him. And all of a sudden, I, I hated him so much as I...